On behalf of the Head Consortium Board of Directors, I would like to welcome you to our 2024 Best Practice Showcase to celebrate technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Jan Miguel, and I will be presenting the speakers for the concrete sessions of this room. Before we begin, we request your support with the following. Please change your mobile phone to silent mode to have your full attention and avoid interruptions. This session is being recorded. This presentation will be in English. Finally, our staff will pass the QR code to all participants to complete the electronic evaluation for this session before you leave the room. You can also find the QR code on your main page. Your feedback and recommendations are very important to us. Now, we are ready to start. This concurrent session is under track. The title of the presentation is Predicting the State of Health of Batteries with Machine Learning. Please welcome our speaker, Eusebio Rodriguez, from the University of Houston, Downtown. Hello, everyone. My name is Eusebio Rodriguez. Uh, today, I'll be presenting my research of uh, state of health of batteries and how I um, or I'm researching to implement machine learning and to predict predicting the state of health of that is. This is a quick rundown of what we're going to go through, but we're just going to just jump straight into it. So um, I have I also a co-researcher, Jared Weems, uh, he wasn't able to make it, but he was a big help in acting like the actual research. He taught me most of the Python and machine learning aspects in this uh, research. And I also have um, Dr. Wayne Feng, that is she's my research mentor, and she also helped guide me through uh, learning and research. So uh, first, we introduce the lithium-ion battery. So if you have a phone, or if you have like a portable bank charger, um, you probably will have a lithium-ion battery, and usually the cells are 18650. Um, these uh, lithium ion batteries have like a long charging cycle uh, life, right? So when we say state of charge, we're looking at, like say, if you look at your phone and it's at 80%, that's your state of charge. That's how much charge your battery has at that time, and it can fluctuate. Uh, it can charge it, discharge it, but for, um, for here, we'll say that that's your state of charge. Uh, for a cycle is how is the time period of having a cell go from full charge to like it's the zero limit to where it will cut off. Uh, there's an internal circuit that actually stops the ion batteries from completely draining to zero, else uh, bad things will happen, uh, like fires, um, explosions. But um, the cycles are from 100% to zero, and these cycles can tell us the state of health of a battery. So say that you use your phone like, way too often, and it always goes from 100 to zero like, many times throughout like uh, 10 years, right? So at the beginning of that state of health of that battery, it's pretty good, right? Because it never been used before, never been touched, and it has zero cycles. But towards the end of its state of health, that battery won't last nearly as long as it would at the beginning of its state of health. And that's what we want to um, kind of have a machine learning uh, model to predict the state of health of batteries. Because if you were to just sit there and then measure the state of charge multiple times, it would be laborious. And later on, you'll see that when you have something to measure it for you, it's just much easier. And then machine learning will actually see trends for you, like even in those many thousands or hundreds of thousands of cycles. So um, my partner was able to teach me about uh, Python and actually using Anaconda to create a machine learning model. Uh, we used Anaconda and TensorFlow uh, using Jupyter Note to actually run the uh, machine learning model. He was able to get it running and to produce uh, semi-accurate results. And I feel with more practice on 
business, um, we could actually create an accurate state of health monitor. So here is when we tested um, we tested a nine volt dry cell battery. These do not recharge. This will just show us um, the actual state of charge just go from 100% to zero. Here you can see that there's a cutoff right here. That's actually preserve the battery uh, to make sure that you don't cause uh, issues for the battery later on. Dry cell batteries usually when you connect them and they run out like this with their state of charge, they will try to bounce back up to their 9 volts. But over time when you use them often, they won't reach uh, entire 9 volts. And then on actual uh, columns, you can see the current voltage, resistance, power. Um, but this is through, um, I believe this was a open circuit voltage. That's why there's, um, this is like the beginning where you would have no load on it. So this is close to the 9.9 volts that you would see at the zero mark, because time is still zero. Um, but we took a data set from Carnegie Mellon University, uh, and this actually looked at one 18650 uh, lithium-ion battery cell that was used in electric vehicle aircraft, and it actually had many cycles that the batteries went through. Uh, you can see on the top is many of the current uh, fluctuations to the cycles, and the bottom is around one cycle. Uh, it was difficult to try to pinpoint and get one cycle, so it's a little cut off. But essentially, this is to show you that it happens many thousands of times um, in, this, in this data set. So, so far, we've researched um, TensorFlow, uh, Jupyter Notebook, and how to use Anaconda. For me, it's mostly just learning how to do Python, and then my partner was able to make the machine learning model, and it was very done very well. Um, but where, where we're going is that we want to actually create the machine learning model to be more accurate. We want to have the uh, implementation of temperature and um, other resistances uh, implemented into the actual uh, estimation of state of health uh, because batteries also have outside factors to their state of health. Like if you measure a battery in a cold area, it might have more, it might last longer uh, through cycles than if it was in a super hot climate. Um, but we're hoping to improve efficiency on our model. Uh, we, and we look forward to adding more uh, variables and parameters uh, to indicate state of health. And that's our presentation.
Next edition of the Hex Academy will be from March 12 to 15 of 2020. Since this is the last session of the day, please complete the general evaluation as well. Good afternoon and on behalf of Hex, thank you for attending its 2024 Best Practices Showcase.